in this retro anime review, I'm going to go way back and look at the oldest anime so far in the series and discuss the adaptation of Osamu Tezuka's classic manga, 1969's Dororo to Hyakimaru. This anime is a 26 episode anime that began airing in April of 1969. It was one of several TV anime adaptations of manga created by Osamu Tezuka, animated by the studio Mushi Production and produced by Tezuka Productions and Fuji TV. These anime including works such as Astro Boy or Tetsuo on Adam, Jungle Taitei, Wonder 3, or Ribbon no Kishi. This adaptation would be directed by Gisaburo Sugi, who is probably best known for directing the film Night on the Galactic Railroad. The manga was another classic work by Osamu Tezuka. The manga, which was a four-volume manga published two years before the anime in 1967, is among some of Tezuka's better works. It's not his absolute best, but in my opinion is one of the strongest manga of his early works. It's a classic work by one of the greatest and most influential manga artists of all time, as well as a man who's often considered the father of modern anime. The story is about a young man named Hyakimaru, who was born missing almost every part of his body. He was born with only a head and a torso, and all other parts of his body were missing. This is because his father, the lord of the region, Kagimitsu Daigo, did a ritual before Hyakimaru's birth in which he sacrificed Hyakimaru's body parts to 48 demons, with each demon taking one part of Hyakimaru's body. In exchange for this, the demons would give prosperity to Kagemitsu Daigo's land, and his land would be prosperous and peaceful while the other areas in the region were plagued by wars and famine. Yakimaru lived despite lacking all of these body parts. After his birth, his mother sends the baby down the river where he ended up being found by a doctor named Jukai. Jukai specializes in making prosthetic limbs, which he gives to Hyakimaru, which allow him to be able to move around. He also teaches Hyakimaru how to fight with a sword. And despite lacking actual limbs, he's able to use these prosthetics to actually become a very skilled fighter. And despite lacking any sensory organs like eyes and ears, he develops the ability to sense the aura of the people and things around him, which allow him to act almost as if he can see. Meanwhile, demons and monsters roam the countryside and terrorize the people that live there. The worst of these being the 48 demons that Hyakimaru's body was offered up to. One day a demon attacks and Hyakimaru does battle with it and manages to kill it. And after killing the demon, his leg begins to grow back. He then realizes that these demons each possess one part of his body and by killing these demons he's able to regain the lost part of his body. So he sets out on a journey to hunt down every demon and restore his body completely. In the first episode, which takes place after Hyakimaru has already set out on his journey, he comes across the other main character of the series, a young thief named Dororo. Dororo is an orphan whose parents were leaders of a gang of bandits, and through a series of events that will be shown in later in the series, both of Dororo's parents will end up dying, and now Dororo is alone and struggling to survive. Dororo ends up stealing food from a group of thieves and gets caught and is being beaten up by the group of thieves for stealing from them when Hyakimaru sees it and steps in and intervenes. This is taking place by the side of a river and the monster that Hyakimaru is tracking comes out of the river and attacks the group of thieves and Hyakimaru fights it and defeats it. Dororo sees Hyakimaru's skills and is very impressed and decides to follow him around. For the most part, the series will progress with Hyakimaru and Dororo going on their journey, traveling the countryside in pursuit of the demons that possess Hyakimaru's body parts. For the most part, each set of a few episodes is based around Hyakimaru coming to a new area where a demon resides and him tracking down the demon and then eventually battling with it and eventually defeating it and regaining one of his lost body parts. The only real breaks in this are some of the flashback episodes which deal mainly with either Hyakimaru or Dororo's past, giving backstory of how they got to this point. Also along his journey, Hyakimaru will come in contact with his father, as well as his mother and the brother that was born after Hyakimaru was cast out. 
Hyakimaru then has to deal with the conflict with his father who wants to kill him in order to prevent him from killing the demons that have given him his power. This is an anime that I think is really great and really special. It may be the oldest anime that I can think of that I consider a must watch for reasons other than just historical significance. This is one of those significant early Osamu Tezuka TV anime that were hugely influential, but in this case, I think this may be the best story-wise, and it may be my absolute favorite anime from the 60s. I think the plot in this anime is much more engaging than any other anime from that time period, and the characters are more developed than you would see in any of those anime as well. I really enjoy the visuals and atmosphere that this anime has. Strangely, the animation was done in black and white. Despite Tezuka doing colored anime already in the past with anime such as Jungle Taite a few years prior, I read that it was done in black and white in order to save budget, but I actually like the effect that this has on the animation's atmosphere. I think the creatures and the demons in the series have really cool, creepy looking designs that are actually pretty unique and pretty scary and gruesome looking, especially coming from an animation that is so old and actually hold up pretty well to modern designs. I think in a lot of these nighttime creepy scenes that are shown, the black and white visuals actually enhance the creepiness of the design and give it a look that is pretty reminiscent of some of these older black and white Japanese horror movies. I can appreciate the historical significance of a lot of these 60s anime, but a lot of them I find are not really all that enjoyable to watch. But that really changes with Dororo to Hyakimaru because this was an anime where the story actually really interested me from the beginning and made me want to keep watching the further episodes to see what would happen. This was an ahead of its time animation that would give signs of the great animation that would come out of Japan in the future, as this would be one of the first truly great Japanese animations. This one I give four and a half stars out of five. As I said, it's a really influential, really important anime, and a very enjoyable one that stands above most of the anime at that time. It is an older anime, and some of the negatives are that the animation quality in action sequences is a bit limited, and the progression of the story towards the end, in my opinion, doesn't really build up too well. It really felt like it jumped from just the standard demon fighting episodes to suddenly going into an ending pretty quickly and pretty abruptly. And I would have liked a little bit more build up towards that ending. And I also would have rather liked to see a more satisfying ending to the series than what was given at the end of this anime. Many of these complaints would actually be solved much later in the future when, in 2019, Dororo actually got a new anime adaptation, and I'll spend a few minutes talking about that anime as well. It was really exciting to see this anime get a new rebooted series, and I think they did a really amazing job with the new anime. And if you think this older, black and white style anime either looks too old or is too slow for you, I definitely recommend that you at least watch the newer 2019 anime, which is actually one of the best modern anime that I've seen in quite a while. The 2019 anime takes a very similar story to the original, but condenses the 48 demons from the original series down to just 12 demons in the newer one. This works well because it condenses the story a bit and makes each of the individual fights more significant, where in the original, many of the 48 demons were either dealt with really quickly or completely off-screen and you never even saw most of them. So there was really no point in having so many demons anyway, so condensing down to just 12 demons works better for an anime like this that's only running for 24 episodes. To me, the most important thing that the 2019 anime does, rather than just bringing in a modern version of the original, it actually expands on the characters and really develops the characters even further and makes the characters even more interesting than they were in the original. They do a really great job with this and they really get into each of the characters' development and their motivations. For example, in the original, Hyakimaru's father, Daigo Kagemitsu, is much more of a standard evil character who simply just wants power. In the newer anime, they made him a little bit more of a deeper character with more complicated motivations. 
in the original, his sacrifice of Hyakimaru seemed more as if just a way to maintain power. Where in the 2019 anime, you see the level of peace and prosperity that the villagers have that live within Daigo's region versus the other regions in the area, which are constantly plagued by famine and warfare. And all the villagers are starving and hardly able to survive. So you can understand why Hyakimaru wants to restore his body, but to the villagers, he's actually somewhat of the bad guy because the sacrifice of just him saves the hundreds or thousands of people that live within that region. And if he destroys the demons and restores his body, they will once again be subjected to famine and warfare and poverty. So this new dynamic in the newer anime adds a level of depth to the overarching story because it's not always completely obvious who's the good guy and who's the bad guy in every single interaction as much as it was in the original. Another change that they made that I liked in the newer anime was in the original when Hyakimaru would regain a part of his body he would almost instantly be skilled at using the limb or would be instantly used to using a sense that he's never had before and he really doesn't undergo any time needed to adapt to using the limb or sense where in the 2019 anime when he first regains his sight or regains his hearing he has to adapt to using these senses for the first time and it actually at first makes him weaker to regain some of these senses because he's never used them before and doesn't know how to affect use them. So I thought that was an interesting change. I also like the character of Dororo more in the newer anime than in the older one. I always thought Dororo was pretty annoying in the original and had sort of a type of scrappy do type feel to the character where Dororo would be pretty much useless but talk a lot of trash and be overconfident for no reason and just get into trouble. Where also in the newer anime I didn't think Dororo was nearly as annoying and actually I thought Dororo was a much more well-written, deeper character who I ended up feeling like I cared for a lot more in the newer anime than I did in the original. And they kind of go deeper into Dororo's character, making Dororo more worthy of being the title character, when in the original I felt like the story mostly focused on Yakimaru and Dororo was just there as kind of a sidekick. Overall, the 2019 anime is an amazing take on an old classic and is one of the few cases where trying to modernize something old actually worked and they did a really good job and captured what was good about the original while making improvements that I think will make it more enjoyable for today's audiences. I'm going to give the 2019 Dororo anime 5 stars out of 5 stars. This one's a must watch for me. Definitely recommend watching both anime. They're both great. The 1969 version is an amazing classic. It's one of the greatest old school anime and probably my pick for the best anime of the 60s. And the 2019 series is a great reboot that is one of the best modern anime that I've seen in recent years. So check it out and thanks for watching the video. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you are interested in seeing more videos like this. 